Here we are in Michigan's Upper Peninsula at Mount Zion Ski Hill in Ironwood, Michigan for round two of the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series. Farron Meeks here along with Paul Mack and we're ready to bring you all of the big highlights from this weekend's action. That's right, Farron, this is gonna be incredible. You know, we talked about how great the track was in Duluth. Everybody saw it. This track is even better. This is a whole new twist here. This is more flavor added into this soup than we've ever had. We've got huge uphills, double downhills, another uphill. We've got a track that's gonna be technically challenging, and the people that can master it that have the fastest times are gonna be riding, I think, a whole different riding style than we've ever had in the past in Snowcross. Also on hand today is our own Natalie Kane, who had a chance to talk to some of the pros before they hit the track. Tucker, tell us about this track and the conditions. Uh, the track's pretty good, you know, it's really long, 53 second lap time, so it's uh, it's nice to have a little bit longer track and especially with the up and down hills, it, it makes for some great racing. And who's your biggest challenge? Uh, it's hard to say, you know, everyone everyone goes fast. It just depends on how the starts go. And, you know, I think Levi the Volley is going to be strong. So the longer laps, how is that challenging? How is that more challenging? Uh, you know, you just have to remember that much more of the course, you know, like when it's a smaller course, you're like, okay, it's a double, double, double down the straight turn, double, double back. This one, you're like, um, there's four different lines. Where, where am I going? Was there a double here or a triple? You know, you're kind of looking all over the place. And that's probably the hardest part about the longer tracks. But I like it just because the, the tracks, you know, you're seeing a lot, diff a lot more um, different situations. Whereas when it's a short track, it's just like round and round and round and round. So I, I really enjoy the longer tracks. How about the weather conditions? What do you think of these? Um, it's not, it's nice weather out. It'd be nice to get some sun, but it is what it is, so we'll deal with it. Who do you think is going to be your biggest challenge here today? I mean, Tucker's definitely the number one, I'd say. Just about anybody in the pro class, they're all fast. Um, Gula, Ross, Levi, they're all super fast, so it's, you can't really out pick, pick out one guy. Well, after having one heat, what do you think the biggest challenge is going to be tonight in the finals? Um, you know, the biggest thing is, is uh, the start as, as normal, you know, it's like important to get the, get the good start and then you can have clear, clear vision and a clear track kind of, and you know, as the day goes on, the, the light's going to get worse and, and it's going to be kind of hard to see. So it's going to be important to be out front early and, and really get a clear track. Well, best of luck with the rest of today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Natalie. And before we get into our racing coverage, we'll once again be using our Motocom helmet cam to show you exactly what the racers will be up against this weekend. This time we're on board with Skidoo racer, Robbie Malinowski, as he heads to the starting line on this half mile long track. Coming off that start, it's just pinned all the way on the uphill, but you can see you've got to slow down and get set for turn one here. Squared up, head back down the Polaris plunge. Down through the Polaris plunge as they make another 180 to the right as they'll head back up the hill and they will be going through the Skidoo Summit. You can see once again, it isn't just pinned, you've got to hold a rhythm here. You're trying to double, come back into a single, make the turn, now you've got the long downhill here, Farron. The parts unlimited rhythm section as they work all the way to the bottom of the hill. It's a long run, Mac. You know, the problem is you can't come down pin. Look how long it is. You can't just hold it wide open. You have to hold your rhythm to keep a good lap time. Here they come. It's the Amsoil finish line, and they will fly across the tabletop and into the Yamaha chicane. Once we go through the Yamaha chicane here, you got to get straightened out. You've got a long uphill right after this point here. Now you're going to try and hold it pinned, but you can't because there's some massive bumps in here. you got to hold the rhythm. Back up to the top of the hill, and that's a lap here in Michigan. And now let's jump right into the action with the highlights from our Pro Super Stock qualifying heats. The top five racers from each of these heats and the last chance qualifier will move directly to the Pro Super Stock final. In Pro Stock Heat 1, Ryan Simons got the whole shot, but he got caught up through the first turn as Levi Labali slipped to the front. 
check out that start there. When you come into turn one, it's an absolute bottleneck. You have very little room for error here. If you go wide and you go on the outside, someone's gonna get by you on the inside every time. From there on out, Levi Lavalli then ran away with the entire race. Levi was so smooth. If you watch him now, it looks like it's almost redemption time after Spirit Mountain when he was second only to Tucker Hibbert. I can't wait to see what happens in the final with Levi. At the end of heat one, it was Levi Lavalli taking the win, followed by Ryan Simons, Carl Shabitsky, DJ Ekstrom, and Bobby LePage. Now on to Pro Stock Heat 2, where all eyes are on Tucker Hibbert. Including mine, Farron. I can't believe how well he did back in Duluth. We're going to see if he can do the same thing here. Does he have the same smooth, fluid rhythm? Or is he going to get the jitters going a little bit too hot and have some troubles? With the drop of the green flag, it was Hibbert with the hole shot. But he, too, was beaten around the first turn, this time by Sean Crapo. By the end of the first lap, though, Hibbert had reclaimed the lead and never looked back. The race was for second between Polaris racers Ross Martin and TJ Gula, who battled hard for second. It's important to place as high as you can because there's a point standings. You have the year-end points championship, as well as your placement for the final, where you're going to start. There's a lot involved here, a lot of mental game here, Farron. Well, there definitely is, Mac. And of course, at the end of heat two, it was Hibbert who took the win. Ross Martin in second, TJ Gula in third, Sean Crapo taking fourth, and finally, Garth Kaufman, all moving on directly to the final. With five out of our first two heats going directly to the final, our front row is set. And now it's time for our Pro Superstock Last Chance Qualifier. After claiming the whole shot, Brett Bender led the race from start to finish. He was followed by Brett Turcott. But the real story here was the third place rider, Andrew Johnstead. He made the leap from semi-pro to pro this year, and now he had qualified for his very first final. It's a hard transition to make. When you're going from semi-pro into pro, it's a whole nother level. You're going up one more notch with that much more degree of difficulty. It's a hard thing to do. It isn't the same going from a semi-pro heat to a pro heat, completely different ends of the spectrum. Well, it definitely is. And after Johnstead, Dave Allard and Matt Judnick also advanced to the final. So with qualifying out of the way, these are the 15 drivers who qualified for our pro stock final. The world's greatest snowcross and freestyle athletes are coming to take over Brainerd, Minnesota. The BIR National Snowcross. February 6th through the 8th at Brainerd International Raceway. See the best snowcross pilots on the planet deliver air, air, and more air. Friday night features the Freestyle Show. Then Saturday and Sunday, it's wall-to-wall -wall racing action. Tickets at the gate or visit isocracing.com. Kids six and under get in free. It's the BIR National Snowcross. February 6th through the 8th. Don't you dare miss it.